So we're done with the mini neck assembly for now. Put that guitar neck assembly back on and uh, we'll get out that other last ball. So this standard, of course, is in for the full treatment, compensated nut, needs that fret dress at the neck junction. So we'll be doing these two Les Pauls in tandem. This beautiful bird's eye maple standard and Scott's Les Paul studio that he sent up from uh, Wisconsin. So step by step, side by side, we'll do both these Les Pauls together. So something I did want to point out for all the latest Tech Deck owners, the shortest strap is made just the right length so that you can cinch down this sort of narrow waist on a Les Paul and still leave the strings free to vibrate. This guitar definitely needs a fret dress at that neck junction but because of the neck to body angle there isn't enough room to even put a mask in here so that pickup does need to be pulled out and set aside as we level that top end. So we get these screws out and usually they give you enough lead wire that uh, it can kind of gently pull that back and wrap it, get it out of the way while we're doing our job. I happen to have a little snapshot earplug container so those screws don't bounce off into infinity. Zip those strings off. Let's see how generous they were with the wire here. See if we've got enough to sort of pull this aside. Oh yeah, there's plenty there. So I've got a piece of foam on the underside there and we're going to slip that into a Ziploc bag. Sort of keep it free from dust and debris. There we go. So the foam obviously prevents the beautiful top from getting scratched or marred. For all of you guys that ordered your fretting kits, you got six of these fret guards. So typically what you would do is, you know, cut one out for a Tele, a Strat, a Les Paul, a Dreadnought, you know, all the uh, sort of typical shapes, maybe an SG. So what I'm doing here is I'm laying that on there and I'm just kind of pressing on it and that is making an impression on the underside. That's what I'm going to cut out. So that was our first step. Now I'm going to just trace on the underside with the pen the cutaway and then the upper bout as well. Like so. And obviously we've got our switch right here. Maybe take a little notch out there as well. So that's what we're cutting out. What we're doing here is we're making a reusable fretting guard for Les Pauls that you can use over and over and over again. And that is what we got. So I can kind of tuck that under the strap like so and now we've got that sealed off. Yeah, there's a bit of slock in there. We're going to take care of that as well. Just set it down here in the back trough for now. Well, take it from someone that has done this type of work for a half a century. You want to save yourself a whole lot of grief. And make sure you got lots of little Ziploc baggies so that those little parts don't go disappearing or bouncing off into Never Never Land. Uh, we've got our truss rod cover off. We do need to adjust that truss rod to get the lay of the neck perfect on this one. For any of you Patreon subscribers, just send me a note if you'd like to see how this job is done. This came out obviously super clean, not a speck of wood, uh, right on the glue line. Uh, we're going to set that aside now, and the, one of the reasons we take that nut out is we want to be able to check along the trajectory of the string path completely from the first fret to the last. So we're doing a compensated nut on this one anyway, so I decided to take that out as we get on to uh, leveling the fingerboard. So we used our short straight edge and we basically found all of the, the high spots that need to be taken care of right at the neck junction or just before it. One of my more recent subscribers had asked me to explain the sort of cross-hatching 
So these are the files that you guys get in your kit. I should send out a couple more today. So this file is a six inch fine mill bastard file. The rat tail's cut off and then I mount it on a hardwood block. What I mean by cross hatching is and you've heard me mention numerous times in other videos that you always move along the trajectory of the string path when you file. You don't want the file to, to go askew like this. It should always be going along the string path. But because the file is dead flat and the actual frets have a curvature, you need to cross hatch to guarantee getting all of the high spots. Now I can feel that grab. There's not a lot here, but there was, but there was enough to prevent the action on this guitar from being set up nice and close. So when I say cross hatching, I'm moving obliquely like this, but I am keeping the file in line with the string path. I'm not turning it as I go. So if I cross hatch, that means I go this way and then I come back in the opposite direction and that guarantees getting the frets level right along the full trajectory of the string path. Okay. There's only a couple of places of sort of real resistance, but I'm going to bring the camera in a little bit closer again to kind of show you. It's pretty obvious the frets that got the biggest hit. This prevents you from dropping the action down to where you really want it to be. So you end up hiking the action up to get rid of all this buzzing in here. Well, that just throws everything right out the window. We don't have to worry about that now because that is taken care of. So we'll get our little straight edge out again. No, it's dead solid all the way across, not a single high spot. I don't know if this one was CNC'd or not, but oftentimes I correct what the CNC misses with the GPS in this file. Let's come in for a closer look. Well, hopefully the camera picks this up. You can see that this fret, the one that I chalked, you can see that squared right off, that crown. It didn't touch on this side, this side's level. It was only on the base side. So this one, this one obviously got a hit too. This one almost all the way across. This one just on the base side. This one, it was sort of E and A string. So you can see there's a bunch of different spots across the width of the fret that weren't quite level along the trajectory of the string path. So now we go on to recrown. So I'm leaving the camera where it is. One more time, what we're doing is, you see me leaning the file like that? I just did three strokes on that side, doing the same in that one, two, three. And you'll see that tooling swath from the file gradually begin to narrow as you kind of work towards the center. And again, you don't finish with this tool. You never actually touch the center of the crown with this tool. You just work the fret towards the center. A little hint of a hint to some tooling marks there. Okay, so this one is the next real sort of square fret. So back and forth, one stroke per side. And that is how we do it. So the rest of this stuff we'll get it with the uh, scrub block, again, that you guys have in your kits. Now I've had another couple of guys asking about the kits, but you know, realistically, I mean, I did this for years for my college students. I would make up, you know, a half a dozen kits for these guys. The uh, leveling file and the fret guards and the leveling blocks. So it's not a big production. It's like I said, I do a dozen. I think there's three left from this uh, last dozen. I'll do up a few more sets as it's called for, but it's, but my real job is to do this work and show you how it's done. So every once in a while, I will stop, take a day or two, and make up a bunch of sets for people that are interested. So if you're interested, please let me know. I can either put you on a waiting list, or you can take one of these last three sets that are uh, packaged and ready to ship. Okay, so back to the guitar. We've kind of smoothed out those outside square edges after leveling. And now we'll switch over to that scrub block once again that I sent in your fretting kits. So these are the scrub blocks that you'll find in your kit. So I just wrap that 400 grit sandpaper around there and kind of hold it into place with my fingers. And then that flexible vinyl slurs and distorts over those crowns and scrubs them back to center. But before we go there, this, this guitar has plastic inlays. They need to be covered. So 
to protect those plastic inlays. This one, so I've got this thinner tape, but even that's a little bit wide for this fret. So I'm just kind of running my thumbnail along there and then just trim it flush to the underside of the crown and we'll just take that little piece off. Good. Next one. I get this uh, thinner masking tape. In this case I got it from uh, oh, in London at a uh, surplus store in London, Ontario. Forest City Surplus. They don't always have it, but they get it from time to time. So when I'm down London Way, I just uh, snap up a few rolls and it keeps me going for a little while longer. Same deal again. We'll just run my thumb along there. Thumbnail along there and then just trim that off flush to the underside of the crown. There we go. And that is what immaculate frets look like next. So that's cleaned up all of this worn area here. More importantly, we've leveled and recrowned that neck to body junction. So now we're onto the compensated nut. So these are the profiled nut blanks that I'm sending to you guys uh, in your um, compensated nut package. First thing we're going to do is going to cut it a little longer than we need. So this is the kind of fit we're looking for. There's no wiggling or jiggling, that's a perfect press fit. So now we're going to smooth it out and get rid of all the notchiness there. Most of those notches will become almost invisible once we go through this next step. And that is what is involved with the compensated nut. And that's why I sell no less than 20 blanks. As you navigate the learning curve on this job, you can guarantee you'll go through those 20 nuts very quickly. Okay, so let's, let's make it look pretty. And this is our bird's eye maple burst standard. And it is 10 to 46 at concert pitch. And those are the values for the compensated nut for this one. So now that both Les Pauls are done, sort of side by side, step by step, it's one thing to look at them. Let's bring them into the studio and have a listen to just how accurate the tuning is. 55 minutes and 4 seconds. So this puts it into perspective for you guys. I know a lot of you guys out there are doing this now, and I'm sure you're going through all the frustrations that uh, my students went through, and I go through myself from time to time. But when you get it right, and it's clickety-click, and everything goes as smooth as glass, you can do this job in under an hour. Here's a good view of this 11 to 49 at Gus Paul Studio. And these are the values for the 10 to 46 at concert pitch on this standard. So a couple of last things I want to sort of compare apples to apples, one Les Paul to the other. On this one, there was absolutely no need for doing a wraparound. There's still plenty of space on the underside of that string, and that, and that tailpiece is pretty well cranked right down. So no wraparound on this Les Paul. However, on this Cherry Burst, we did indeed go to a wraparound bridge. So the point I'm trying to make is... It's not an arbitrary call to do a wraparound bridge. It all depends on the neck set. In this case, in order for the strings to clear the casting on the back of the bridge, without a wraparound, this tailpiece would have been hiked up way too high. Now we've got it crank right down to the body. The strings are nice and tight on all the saddles all the way across. And we've got that clearance on the back of the casting. So, wraparound and no wraparound. So this is the bird's eye maple cherry burst. I'm going to lay down the cords on this uh, standard and then I'll blow over top of it. This is kind of a like a D minor blues thing and uh, I'll just play through the chords.
this. perfectly regulated cherry burst bird's eye maple Les Paul standard put our little pink slip over there I always love these Gibson cases and this customer's tuning problems are over forever case closed Scott's Les Paul studio set up for 11 to 49 strings of concert pitch that weird string spacing and the tuning problems will now be a distant memory one more Les Paul case closed